And sometimes, God, you need to be woken up. Amen. Out of your slumber, out of the darkness, you know, you need to be woken up because sometimes you just don't see what you need to see. Come on now. Amen. God woke me up. <coughs> and he says, Mike, you've been around this not long enough. Oh, praise God. Glory to God. Praise God. It's time to come out. Woo. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. And I started writing things down, man. Jesus. When I get inspired by the Spirit, man, I do not stop until that Woo. thing is done. Jesus. Amen. And I'm telling you the truth, guys. It is a perfected thing that you see here today. Amen. Amen. It is being perfected even before our eyes. And the reason is, is because God wants you to know that he can do it. Yes. Amen. If no one else can do it, but he can do it. Amen. Amen. And look at what God has done. Amen. Look at what God has done. Man, I'm telling you, if you guys want to see this place a year ago and see it today, it is not the same thing. It is not the same thing. Hopefully within the next few weeks I'll have a little collage of pictures I'll be putting out. But I, I tell you, I, I, I've got a few people I need to thank. Amen? I need to thank R.B. Yeah. Russell. Amen? Yeah. 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 Standing with me, side by side, week after week, for months, helping me with this ministry. Amen? Helping me get the walls up. He was instrumental yeah. in about the first three quarters of, uh, of our transition. Amen? I got Mr. Mike over here, Mike Adams, amen? He helped us out a bit. Who else is here? <laughs> Pastor Pedro. Pastor, well listen, Pastor Pedro's last, okay? I got, I got a few things to say around him. But listen, uh, I can't do it without you guys, okay? I, I can't do it without you guys. It means a whole lot of up to me to know that you guys are there with me. Amen? Amen. It, it means a lot. Okay? And now that we're in transition, let us move forward. Amen? Amen? Amen. The last three weeks, me and Pastor Pedro were in this place for 14 hours a day. Every single day. Okay? Working hard. I am, I, but we, you guys understand, when you get caught up in the Spirit, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Amen. You, you go from sun up to sun down, right? The labor of love. And, and I'm telling you, it was a it was the power of God that set us in motion to get this thing ready. Amen. Even even uh, earlier today, man, we were still cleaning up. Amen. But I, I'm telling you guys, okay, I didn't do it for me. I did it for you. You guys hear me? I didn't do it for me. I did it for you. And the reason why is because it's not about me. It's about you. It's about your future. You guys need a place to call home, right? You guys need a place to congregate. You guys need a place to have a family. Amen? And it's not about you also. It's about your kids and your grandkids. Amen? I'm just telling you. This, 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 this is a stable place. We're not moving. Amen. I'm not moving again. Amen. Amen. I'm, not, I'm learning my lesson. So as it's been said, so shall it be. Amen. And my wife was even threatening. So I'm not moving. Amen. Uh, I need to acknowledge one more person if I can. You see all this beautiful woodwork? It's only been done by one person. And it's Mr. Charles Stewart back there. Amen. Before too long, guys, there's a door inside of there, inside of my office. It's going to be going right there. The man has spent countless hours. Craftsmanship. You guys don't see this anywhere. I don't care what church you go to. You're not going to see this kind of stuff. This is special. Amen? It is truly special. 
And then my wife finds the other pieces of our stained glass for the cross. Amen? She finds what? Find the stained glass for the cross. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Where'd you find it? <laughs> Amen? So, uh, you know, uh, again, guys, I thank you. Okay? But we're coming out. We're coming out. We're crossing over, amen? Am I setting you up pretty good? We're coming out and we're crossing over, amen? We're coming out and we're crossing over. I can't wait. You know what God told me? This is our inheritance. Okay? This is our inheritance. Let us build from here. Families, peoples, and nations, okay? Let, let us build from this place. And let us move on and see what God can do. Amen? There's a special thing that God is doing in this place that has never been done before. I'm helping raise up another ministry. Pastor uh, Pedro, would you please stand with your wife and your children? Starting you. Wednesday, our Wednesday night service is going to be a little bit different. I don't want you guys to stay home, though, okay? But Pastor Pedro is going to start a Hispanic church. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm helping him just as much as he's helping me. Amen. You guys understand, he put his blood, sweat, and tears in here just as much as I did, so I'm backing him up, amen? amen. Mano y mano, amen? amen. I I'm just saying, this man is special. He, he's got a calling on his life. He came all the way from Columbia to Gaffney. That's, that's, a, that's not Columbia, South Carolina. No, not either. Columbia, South Carolina. Amen. Columbia. <laughs> Columbia. Columbia. Yeah. He's got a story to tell. So I, I bless you, Pastor. And I bless your family. Amen. And he's going to be starting his, his services Sunday afternoon. Okay, we're going to have our services at 10.30, and he's going to start about 1 o'clock, 1 p.m., okay? So let's support him Amen. just as much as he's supporting us, amen? Because he's going to be here, amen? And he's in the mix. He's my brother. Amen. His wife is my sister. His kids are my kids. Amen. Amen. So let's bless them, Amen. 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 Right. So much of the time, guys, we uh, we don't help each other. Mm -hmm. The name of the ministry is going to be called, it's a different thing from now on. Starting today, it's called Mission of Grace Training Center. All right. The reason why is because every one of you guys that want to be a part of this <coughs> are going to be raised up. Every one, <laughs> every one of you are going to be raised up. Okay, God is not a, uh, he doesn't care about where you've been, what you're doing, you know, type thing. He wants to clean you up and raise you up. Amen. Amen. For such a time as this. Amen. That's the only command that he's commanded us as pastors to do is to disciple people and to raise them up to do ministry. We're not to do church we're to do ministry. That's right. Amen? Amen? Outside of these walls, people need to hear the gospel from your lips. Amen. Not just mine. Amen? That's right. And so things are going to change, guys. Starting next week, on the 10th of uh, December, Pastor Bruce and Elaine Barton are coming in, and they're starting uh, the International School of Ministry. We're kicking it off on that Tuesday night. You guys want to uh, come on board? We already have 17 signed up, possibly already 20. Okay, I think RB or RB WT. There you go. Then, as, <laughs> see, you guys are messing me up, man. <laughs> but WT said that he wants to come on board. Amen. Amen. But uh, listen, we we can fill up this thing. Okay, it's only 65 dollars a trimester. You That's can't get that any place else. Nope. Okay? It's an introductory offer to get people on board. Uh, it may go up the next time we do this. But what I'm saying is 
the 65 bucks for three months of, of teaching, you're going to get a biblically solid foundation. Okay? And it's nothing hard. It's not like you have to you know, pack up your bags and sell your house and all your goods and, and go to like Liberty University or some other place. Okay? Where this place here is, is called home and we'll raise you up out of here. Amen? Amen. And it's Amen. just as good. A two-year degree in biblical studies will give you a solid foundation okay, that we can all work together in. Because we're all going to be of the same mind. Amen? Amen. The mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. We're all going to be of the same mind, have the same heart, have the same purpose. Amen? So think about that. Already you mentioned Darby. Today, this man stood with me against the city of Gaffney because we both were being hit with something we didn't even understand. Okay, but what it has done it has caused us to bond together in something that we will never be uh, separated from. Amen. It's common ground. And I'm telling you guys, this man has come here today with a word. Amen? Word in season. So you guys got your Bibles? Yeah. Get out your Bibles and let's give a warm welcome to Pastor Ricky Serrano. Easter. And December houses 
Christmas. Not only do we celebrate the birth, but we also celebrate the resurrection together. We are connected in a way that God saw fit that we would take the bookends of Christianity and set it on this street. Come on, man. Because when I first moved up the street, Pastor Mike said to me, you're now the gatekeeper. Because you're at the end and you have to uphold what's coming through this area. You have to face it. And what I realize now is that not only being the gatekeeper, we were also the protector while you guys were getting ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it took something to see already been done to give Mike the courage to keep going. Amen. There were times he would just stop by the church. And I know because he's a man, not because he's a preacher, but because he's a man, there were longings to say, when is my time coming? He's even voiced it to me. He's like, I just, I don't understand what's, what's going on, why so long. But then he started to see some things change personally. And he would share with me how God was really changing his mindset. How God was massaging his heart for not just the people, but the people and how government needed his heart with them yes. and he was sharing that with me and the whole time nobody else really bothered you guys if you think about it mission of grace was not bothered by anybody during this whole transition god set a standard at the end of the road and he kept his angels on guard so that he can finish the work here. And there's, it's not a coincidence that he and I came together. This is all God's work. Yes. It's not a coincidence that Pastor Pedro is now here. Yes. God allowed the hardship to bring about his governance. Yes. <laughs> so with that in mind, Turn to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. That's my assignment that I was given. And I take it very seriously. We're going to read the whole chapter because I'm supposed to preach the whole chapter. Of course, I'm not emphasize the whole chapter, but I will bounce around several areas in it. I'm going to read, I think this is New King James. It is. Uh, just follow along with what you have. If you're in Joshua chapter 1, say amen. 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 Father, we thank you and we bless you. For you are an awesome there is no one that compares to you, God. And so as we stand and sit to, at your feet right now, speak your words to us. Use me as you see fit however you want it to be done. Forgive us for anything that is not of you. We cast it at your feet. Let your presence be strong today, Father. You be seen and not me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am given to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down the sun shall be your territory. No man 
shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which, law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous. That's the second time it's mentioned that. And then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage. That's the third time he said that. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourselves for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go and to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke, saying, Remember the word, the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. Your wives, your little ones, your livestock shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. But you shall pass before your brethren armed all your mighty men of valor and help them until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you and they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God has given them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of the Jordan toward the sunrise. So they answered Joshua saying all that you command us we will do, and wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord, your God, be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your command, somebody say command, command. and does not heed your words, and all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. I'm going to use for a title today, from deliverance to the promise. From deliverance to the promise. Now, before you get excited, I need to let you know that you are in your place. However, it is not the promised land. But don't get discouraged because it's a good place. Now, I told you I was going to bounce around a little bit, so let me explain that part to you. In verse uh, 12, Joshua spoke and said to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Look up here for a second. If you picture that this would be the Jordan River. On this side of the Jordan is the promised land where the 12 tribes of Israel were supposed to inhabit and take control of. And as the Israelites came to the Jordan, there was this rich, fertile land that was right in front of it. And the tribe of Reuben said, let us have this land. They said, let us occupy here the Gad and the tribe, some members of the Gad, of the tribe of Gad and, and some of the half tribe of Nessus said, yeah, we want to settle here. We don't necessarily want to cross the Jordan. We want to stay here because it's good land. They saw that it was full 
of things that were great for their livestock. The soil was so rich, they could plant whatever they needed to. I mean, it was beautiful. It was great. And Moses told them, you can settle here. But when it's time to fight, you have to send your strong men to help us win. They said, that's fine. We'll do that. So what I'm saying, Mission of Grace, is that God has positioned you to seek the joy so that you know that you've come from the wilderness. Hallelujah. And as you've come from the wilderness, you are settling in a rich land, a good place. Now the thing about the good place is that this land, this tribe of Reuben, became the tribe that had the land of refuge. Anytime there was a problem within the 12 tribes and someone was basically about to be, let's just use our common day terms, to be thrown in prison <laughs> or they were on the run, they could go to the land of refuge and take residence there and receive basically a state. They could, they could come there, live in peace, as long as they didn't cause any trouble. It was a place where anybody that was in trouble could come and find new life. Does that say something to you? Amen. Yes. If there's someone in trouble, they can come to the Mission of Grace training school. Come on now. And find new life. This is a place of refuge. Now, for some, they will say, man, I think we're getting the short end of the stick. I, I, I wanted to be in the promised land. I wanted us to go and tackle. And God says, that's not your assignment. You don't have to go and conquer land when I've already given you this place. Pastor Mike said earlier, we're not going anywhere else. This is it. <laughs> he said, Miss Lois said, yes, this is it. Well, God is saying, this is it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. you have to know that you have the land in which you can grow whatever you need to grow. You can build whatever you need to build. You can serve whoever you need to serve because God has supplied it for you. He has brought you to the place where the banks of the Jordan will spill over fresh soil into your land. Amen. This is the place of refuge. You've come from deliverance and you're looking at the promise, but you're right there in between. Sometimes transition is really good. Because you're at the spot where you know I'm not where I used to be. And I'm in position to help someone go where they need to go. That's the spectacular, unique ability about this place. Amen. So with that in mind, let's look at some of the other parts of the scripture so that we can understand what God is saying because this is not my normal way of preaching. I, 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 normally I would have an intro, some points, and a conclusion. But God is wanting you to really understand this, this, this thing that he has you in. Uh, he begins this chapter telling Joshua that Moses is dead. It's amazing that God has to tell Joshua this. You would think they would already know. But because of the way Moses' relationship was with God, was with God, there are times where he was set so far away from the Israelites that they didn't know what was going on. And so now God has to come and tell Joshua, Moses is now dead. There's no funeral. There's no memorial service. There's no time for weeping. Mike, Lois, Mission of Grace, stop crying about it. 
Amen. It's over and it is done. God says, that which was is now dead. Jesus even tells people in the New Testament, you know, let the dead bury the dead. Now we know he was telling them to prepare, let, let them prepare for death. You prepare for life, basically. And God is telling you today, that time of what used to be is dead. That is not your identity anymore. He says, now I'm placing Joshua in command. Joshua was a very faithful Israelite. If you know anything about Joshua, you know that he was one of two people, he and Caleb, of the 12 spies that went to look at the promised land and came and gave a report back. He and Caleb were the only two that said, that they were well able to go and take the promised land. The other ten spies, who represented the other ten tribes, said, you know, no, there are giants in that land, and there's no way we can handle this. And that's what caused those children of Israel to wander for 40 years. Really, they were like four days away. <laughs> they really could have just walked into the promised land within four days if they would have agreed that God is right, we can take the promised land. But since Joshua had that, that confidence in God that it could be done, he became Moses' assistant. And because of the mantle that came from Moses now to Joshua, the Lord has to tell Joshua three times, be strong and courageous. <coughs> Why does God do that? When we read anything about Joshua, we don't see a fervent, resilient attitude or character. We don't see one who's forceful. We see one who's a servant. And kind of reminds me of Mike Prater. Because this is a man who has an humble heart. He's assertive, but he's not one to force his way into your life. He allows circumstances and he allows God to orchestrate where he can minister in a way that where you can relate to him. And now what God is saying today is that there's a change that needs to occur not only for Mission of Grace but also in my freedom. Because now he's in command. When you come into command, there has to be a respect for commandments or for orders. Not to the point to where they are your God, but they are your man of God and woman of God. In other words, we all have a tendency to want to follow strong leadership, do we not? We want strong leadership to take us to where God wants to, us to be. And God is saying, now, Mike Freda, you are in the position of Joshua. You no longer have the mild manner character that most people know of you. You also now have the commander to rise up in you. He said earlier, this is Mission of Grace training school. Because this now becomes a command post. Amen. In Jesus. Amen. In Jesus. God required, and I wrote a lot of this down of what God wanted me to say to you. God required Moses to live on the outskirts of the camp. It was there where the people came to the tent of meeting to settle matters and for judgment. God is releasing upon you a Moses and Joshua mantle. The people who follow you are to recognize that you are not to be in the midst of them as one who lives with their everyday routines. This will be different for your ministry. You are accustomed to walking hand in hand with those who are with you. And God says it's time to change your approach and cause the people to grow 
and following commands and not just commentary. Your leadership style will transform from the proclaimer, as Joshua did about being well able to conquer the promised land, to commander. Not that you won't proclaim the gospel, but now they will see you in addition to being a proclaimer to more of a commander. You will command the people, you will command the way your life unfolds from this day forward. You will even command the enemy. Somebody ought to say amen to that. When Jabez Arby, when Joshua went forth in conquest, he only had one glaring mistake. And that was found later on at the look, uh, 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 once we get further on in Joshua, is when he went in the battle of Gideon. He just went ahead in a practical manner because it made sense to go to war with Your move from up the street to here was a practical move that made sense. Even though you prayed about it, you didn't seek the Lord in the manner which you seek him now. This year-long battle that you undertook was the last time you have to go through loss in ministry. Somebody ought to give God glory to us. From this day forward, God is providing for you a time of rest for you, your family, and the people who come to this ministry as a place of refuge. The one thing that you may not have counted on is that you have not finished fighting. But fear not. Your fight from this point is to help others find their place of rest. All right. All right. You will do well and thrive in your new home. Because this is a command post. Marching orders will be given here. Prophets and priests will learn to advance the kingdom here. Your facility will have a hedge of protection placed around it so that those who need protection will be able to find it here. Your losing days are over. Look at what you've learned. You wouldn't have made this facility as nice as it is without the fight. You would have settled. You wouldn't have changed in your mindset and the way you operate with God the way you do now without the fight. You and your wife wouldn't have grown as close as you are now together without the fight. The battle was designed to bring you to commander status. Before you were a staff sergeant. Now God needs you to be strategic and looking from a broad viewpoint. You will begin to see how to flank the enemy's territory. You will understand how to cut off supply routes to the enemy. You will pick the best entry point to infiltrate the enemy's territory and how to disrupt his cavalry. As commander, you will set the standard of excellence out of all who look to you. Expect their best and then raise the bar to pull out of them what God has already put in them. Right. Right. While you have been given much, much more will be given. Luke 12, 48. You have found favor with God and with men. Proverbs 3 and 4. Give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Luke 6 and 38. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Isaiah 54 and 17. You shall therefore keep the whole commandment that I command you today. That you be strong and go and take possession of the land that you are going over to possess. And that you may live long in the land the Lord swore to your fathers to give to them and to their offspring. A land flowing with milk and honey. For the land that you are entering to take possession of is not like the land of Egypt. From which you have come where you sowed your seed and irrigated it like a garden of vegetables. But the land that you are going over to possess 
It's a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water by the rain from heaven. A land that the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are always upon it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Deuteronomy 11, 8 through 12. What God is saying to Mission of Grace is, you made it. You have made it. You have made it to the place where he will start to produce weapons of mass destruction for his kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Now in verse 16 we've heard God speak in the beginning of the verse of the chapter. We saw where Joshua spoke to the tribes. Here is the response from the people. So, Mission of Grace, this is you in verse 16. So they answered Joshua saying, so they answered Mike saying, all that you command us, we will do and wherever you send us we will go just as we heeded Moses in all just like we tried to do back then so we will heed you just don't do this don't do anything else but this Mike only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses don't even let us tell you what to do. Only let God tell you what to do. Amen. Don't even let the crowd on the outside tell you what to do. Only let God tell you what to do. Don't even let the city or other ministries tell you what to do. Only let God tell you what to do. If you follow God, we follow you. Amen. Then verse 18, Mission of Grace, this is where you have to be mean about the work of God. This is where the protection that you have to in, that you have already placed on you, you have to use it. Because it says, whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words and all that you command him shall be put to death, only be strong and of good courage. In other words, do not tolerate disobedience to your commander. Right. Amen. He didn't say it, the people said it. You have to come to a point where you say he is our leader and we're going to follow him. Right. And anybody that's not on board, you can be gone. Amen. That's what you have to do to make this work. Because anytime there's insubordination in the ranks of the military, what do they do? They bring them up on charges into a court martial. Come on, right? come on. You have to know that this is so serious, that you guys are so special to God, that this command post, this training now, is such a fortuitous staple in this region. Not, this, not just this city, but in this region, that there will be other sergeants and majors who leave this building, going out, conquering the enemy's territory. And this home base, this place has to stay in order. Amen. There can't be dissension among the ranks. There can't be questioning about what God is telling him to do. We have to come into agreement with one another and say, this is what God says. This is what the man of God says. We're doing it. Amen. No matter how strange it may sound. See, what God set up in Joshua chapter 1 is what's coming down the pike at Jericho. Come on. How strange is it to tell someone, walk, but don't say nothing, mm. and then go back home and do it six days? That's strange. But that's the kind of, of commandments that's going to come to Pastor Mike Frey. Yeah. God's going to give him some things for Mission Grace to do. And it's going to sound strange. But 
But what you have to realize that he's already delivered you from Egypt. Because when you were in Egypt, it was robot. Just do because we have to do. Not that I have a choice. But when you've been delivered to promise area, you have a choice. But the choice should be whatever God says. And if God says, walk and be quiet, then you have to walk and be quiet. It can't be, well, I think we should, well, maybe, why don't we try, or could it be that that means, uh-uh, it has to be walk and be quiet. That might be new for some of you because you understand how the world works. And you, by understanding how the world works, you have a way of strategy like, the world. In other words, you know how to do things to get through, to get over, to get by, to get around. But God says, sometimes I want to take you straight through it. Amen. I want you to face it head on. And so the worldly ways that you know how to handle no longer will work with what I'm doing. It has to come straight from him. But there's some good news too. Like that wasn't good news. But there's more good news. In verse number seven and eight. I think seven and eight will do it. It says only, this is God talking now. This is what I'm going to end on. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. In other words, everything that we had set up prior to getting to this point, don't abandon that. That was your foundation. He says, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. Why? That you may prosper wherever you go. There are a lot of people who don't like to talk about prosperity in the Bible um, because there are so many people who have abused the language of prosperity with scripture. Yet when God puts it in front of your face you cannot ignore it. And if God is putting the word prosper in our scripture then we need to address it. He says, when you keep my commandments, when you keep my law, everything that Moses taught you, there's going to be a reward for it. In other words, you didn't come this far just to stay down. God is ready to bring you up because he wants you to prosper. What kind of God would we serve if all we ever did was just barely make it? When from the beginning of time, he put everything in the earth for us to enjoy. Now sin messed all that up, don't get me wrong. But God's intention was for man to love him and enjoy his creation. Amen. And too many of us don't enjoy it because we're barely making it. So this is the word here for the house. He says, stay to my law that you may prosper wherever you go. Then he says, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Even if you don't know what it, the word means, you still should read it. You should read this book constantly. Why? I don't understand everything that's in it. Well, if you are a blood-washed, born-again believer, you have the Holy Spirit in you. He understands it. He inspired it. So if you're saying that if I read this, then my spirit's going to understand, yes. Because what you feed 
that's what will grow. Amen. That's right. That's right. And the more you feed your spirit, the more your spirit will grow. And when you grow in your spirit, then that starts to push your flesh out of the way. It's, it's like having a room with three uh, inflatable balloons in it. And one of them is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and the other one's deflating. That's your spirit getting bigger the more words you put in. And that's your flesh getting smaller as the spirit gets larger because you're meditating on this word day and night. Amen. You want to know why it's important to know the word? Because you're in a command post, a training center that's going to send you out to the hedges. It's going to send you out to the byways. He's already said you all are going to be raised up. You're going to be voices for the Lord. You're going to be proclaimers. You're going to be the people who this region looks at and say, I know where they come from. They come from Mission of Grace. They have a word in their belly. God is using them. You should listen to them. I know their commander. He's one that loves God. He's been through hell and back. He's fought for those people. Yeah, I know that those those are the ones that God is raising up. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what your education is or how much money you have. God says, you put my word in you and I will grow you. Amen. 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 But look at the last part of that verse. Method of day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, for then, Here's the condition. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Not only are he's going to make your way prosperous, the way you, do, way you go, but he's also going to give you good success. See, a lot of people get prosperity along the way, but they're not very successful. Amen. Come on, come on. God says, I'm giving you not only the prosperity, but I'm going to give you good success. You're going to win. You're going to win. Because some of you have already doubted and said, well, I don't know about going out and proclaiming God. God says, you're going to win. Amen. I don't know if I can be used. God says, you're going to win. All right. All right. I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, stay here and learn and do as God wants. God says, you're going to win. You're going to have good success. That's why you come through the wilderness to learn not to be fearful. All You've right. seen too many fall away. You've seen too many that not make it. But God says, I brought you to the point where you're going to have good success. Amen. He's brought you from deliverance to the promise. Amen. Now, let's talk about where exactly where you are right now. <laughs> Mike said this, he, they were still cleaning this morning. And I understand that to the last minute you're getting it done. Amen. Now it's time for you to rest. It's time for consecration. Hallelujah. I'm probably entering into the next chapter of somebody else's word, but we're going to do it anyway. When the Israelites got through and they crossed the Jordan, those who were supposed to cross over, God had them to be circumcised. And they had to wait three days for healing from the circumcision. It was a time for them to rest. But here's the kicker. While they were resting, the enemy saw them and became afraid. Hallelujah. Come on now. You entered into your place. God's going to give you a time of rest. And the enemy is going to look at you and become afraid. Because the commentary was this. Isn't that the people who took down Pharaoh? Isn't that the people who took down the city? Isn't that the people who God had to cross not only the Red Sea, but also the swelling Jordan. And while you are resting, enjoy the time of your healing because the enemy cannot march against you. Amen. Amen. Come on, lift Amen. your hands to God. Lift your hands and tell him, I thank you, God. I thank
thank you for deliverance to the promise. I thank you for this time of rest. I thank you for healing us from all the toil. I thank you for the place of refuge. I thank you for passing the mantle from Moses to Joshua, now resting upon Mike and Lois. Amen. Thank you, God. And I pray right now upon all the people that you would do what he says to do. And that you would go wherever he sends you to go. And knowing that you are in the will of God. Let all the people say. Amen. Clap your hands and bless God. Ricky, that was awesome, brother. Thank you so much. Right on time, man. Right on time, brother. Thank you. Amen. You guys, you see that word today? I tell you what, man. This is the truth. Everything that he spoke on, man, is in the word. Amen. It's in my spirit. Listen, it's time. It's time. It's time. We're changing. Amen. We're no longer what we once were. Mm -hmm. Everything is different from now on. This is a command post. I love that. <laughs> Amen. This is a command post. We are supposed to raise up leadership and armies. Amen. And send them out. That's, that's our whole initiative from now on. Amen. Let us uh, <laughs> grab a hold of this thing, man, and embrace it. Amen? And you guys are a part of it. Okay? Those that want to be a part are going to be a part of it. Amen? And I'm telling you, there is not one person here that God does reject. Okay? Amen. He accepts everybody on board. The only reason why we would be rejectable is because we're not right with Him. Yeah. Amen? Can I be right? Can I be honest? Yeah. Okay? Listen, we got to be right. Amen. Okay? got to be blood-bought. we got to be sold out. This thing is no longer Saturday afternoon baby style. Come on now. Amen. I, I'm telling you guys, this is, man, once you start seeing this thing roll, man, it's going to run. Okay? He has promised me <laughs> that we are going to run and not be weary. Yeah. Right. Amen? Walking up. But, but this week, you know what I'm doing this week? I'm resting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not preaching. I'm resting. You know why? Because I need to receive everything that God has for us. Amen. And you guys need to be here too. Why? Because you need to receive everything. Everything that God has for you. Amen. Yes, it's going to be uh, every day from now on out. Every day until the 8th. Amen. We've got Pastor Lee Byers coming. No, no, Kerwin Ray is coming tomorrow, okay? 7 p.m., okay? Pastor Lee Byers is coming on Tuesday, amen? Pastor uh, Pedro is going to be preaching on Wednesday, amen? amen? Come on, guys. And then Apostle mentioned, no, I'm sorry, Pastor Larry Romick. Am I saying that? He's preaching on Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday... I've got a special guest who's probably related to me coming all the way from Colorado. Amen? His name is Apostle Mitch Quintana. And uh, man, I'm telling you, he's coming with fire, guys. He's, we are setting things in place. Amen. Starting today, we're setting things in place. You know why? Because things are going to change. I am receiving my inheritance now. Right. Amen. Amen. I am receiving my inheritance now. Amen. And I'm going to help you guys cross over yes. and get your place. Yes. Get your stuff. Yes. Amen. And help you destroy your demons and your giants in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. We're going to take Gaffney by storm. Amen. We're going to take Cherokee County by storm. You know why? Because God has set Cherokee County as a place of refuge. I've seen that, guys. My wife can tell you, 20 years ago, God gave me that word. 
pastor did not know about that. I'm telling you now, God has set this place as a place of refuge. I don't know why. I can't understand why. Except for the fact that maybe, just maybe, we are in a place called Cherokee County that needs to have people in place that can take on other people that need help. Amen? You guys understand. That's why you're here too, isn't it? You needed help. Amen? You needed help. You needed a place of refuge. You needed a place to come out of the storm. You needed a place where God could restore you and pick you back up. Amen. Come on now. The world ain't going to give you what God can give you. Amen. Come on now. We've been searching too long Amen. for the world to take care of our needs. And the world ain't going to do it. That's right. God will do it. Amen. But he's got to change your heart first. Amen. And then change your mind. Amen. Amen. To where we're all thinking the same way. Now, one last thing before we close. Tomorrow at noon, it's kind of interesting that we're starting off in Joshua chapter 1. What, what are you guys thinking that we're going to be going after? Huh? Any ideas? What happens in Joshua? What does Joshua and his armies go after? What is the one big city that everyone was in fear of? Jericho. Jericho. You know what? I want to take my Jericho. And it's right here in Gap. Come on now. Isn't it interesting how we are in the center of the city? Isn't it interesting how the devil is trying to keep us from our territory that he wants to keep hold of. Amen. It's like a stronghold, a big wall that seems to be impenetrable. Okay? God has told me back on that Thursday morning at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning that this is our Jericho. We need to break down these walls. We need to come against not just the city. I'm not coming against flesh and blood now. Amen. I'm not coming Amen. against flesh and blood now. I'm coming up against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Come on now. Amen. That have held us. Look outside, guys. Tell me that we don't have a problem. Amen. Tell me that we don't have some kind of experience that's seen on the outside of a, a of an underlying problem on the inside. Amen? Amen? We... We're dead out here, guys. Amen. We're dead out here. Okay? How do we fix deadness? We put life into it. Amen? Who has life? Jesus, Jesus does. Amen? God has told me that from starting tomorrow at noon, okay, I'll go by myself if I have to. Starting tomorrow at noon, I am to encompass my possessions. Doesn't he say in Joshua chapter 1, every place where you set your foot is going to be yours. God has promised me Gaffney. 20 years ago, he promised me I would have Gaffney. Now, it's not for me. It's not my possession. It's yours. It's where you live too, right? Come on now. But I'm going to walk around Gaffney tomorrow, starting tomorrow at noon. And I'm not going to say a word. It's a time of prayer and fast. Amen. Amen. If you guys can uh, come with me, let's walk together. Amen. Amen. He says to walk around the city how many times? Once. Once. Just one time a day. Okay? Once tomorrow. Once the next day. Once the next day. You know why, guys? Because come Saturday now. Jericho's coming down. Yeah. 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 Jericho's coming down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, our mindset has got to change. Mm -hmm. But the culture has got to change. That's right. And we have to be uh, planet shakers. Amen? Amen? The word apostolic comes from the word apostolos. 
And this is recognized in the older times as, as a vessel that came in behind the armies. Okay? I, I was never taught this. I just found out about this recently. This apostolos was a ship that had everything in it to change the culture. You see? And, 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 and they were to go behind the armies that were uh, taking over the territory and they would bring their arts, their crafts, their, their food, their music, and they would come in behind the armies and change the culture to where when the king set his foot upon the new land, he'd go, oh, this looks a lot like Rome. You know what Jesus has done? He's called us to be apostles. To go and change the culture. Where when he sets his foot upon the land, and he will, he said, man, this looks a lot like the kingdom. Amen? Why do we, why do we pray if it's not going to happen? Yeah. Do we not pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done? Where? On earth. On earth. Why don't, why don't we take in the culture? Why aren't we changing our environment? The world tends to change our environment, though. Isn't that crazy? How we have got a cultured society within the church that looks a lot like the world now. That ain't supposed to be. It's supposed to be the other way around. Over the last 40 years, we've been losing ground. We haven't been gaining ground. We've been losing ground. <coughs> I, I had to fight to get this one back. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. 40 years ago, we wouldn't have had to fight mm -hmm. to gain ground here at downtown Gaffney. Come on now. Amen. I had to fight. Mm -hmm. My brother Ricky had to fight to get this ground back. Mm -hmm. And I ain't going to give it back. Yeah, yeah. man. Come on now. If anything, I'm going to gain more ground. All right yeah. now. If anything, I'm going to use it to gain more ground. Because I want to see his kingdom come. Amen. 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 That's what Joshua was all about. Taking over the, the cities and changing them to where it becomes Israel. Amen. Amen. It's no longer corrupt. It's not, listen, the reason why God sent them in there was because he was disgusted with all the tribes and all the people. He said, man, th this is a stench in my nostrils. Go in there and change it. And it became Israel. Amen? Amen. Come on now. So we're taking over territory. And every night we're going to be in Joshua. Every night. Okay? 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Amen? Amen? How many of you guys are going to be here? Praise God. Amen. Okay? 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Be here, guys. If you want to be a part of the change, if you want to be a part of the army that changes the atmosphere in Cherokee County, come. Okay? You might not even have to 